Yes, yes, yes. And come on, Facebook. They are connected. But guys, I want to say good evening. We And just to remind you, as before we start the show, I have another show. I have two shows a week now. We have uh, Conversations After Dark. There we go. We are in the Zoom. We can see you guys. Hi, hi, hi. Wonderful. Wonderful. So happy about that. Fantastic. So we are now live on Facebook. We are now live in the Zoom room. We are on several different pages. I've got different screens going. So if you can make sure that you are, let me just mute you. There you go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Welcome. Guys, tonight's show is going to be an incredible show. So I'm going to go right into it because we are starting a little bit later than normal. But we're going to go straight in, straight deep diving. And what we are talking about today, it's a mixed bag. It's we're talking about mental health, but we are also looking at mental health from a parent's perspective, from a student's perspective. Now, we have heard um, over the last few weeks, we've seen things change dramatically within our world, within our country. And so what we are going to be talking about today is what impact those those changes have made and what can we do how can we overcome those things that may seem to be holding us back all right so this is about us taking control it's about us moving forward it's about us doing the necessary things that we need to do as people to get things done right to make the changes that we need for ourselves and for our families all right so this is what today's show is about and i've got some incredible guests in the zoom room so i have um we have ruth carter who is the liberty coach who works with students and with teachers and with parents so she does the whole 360 degrees work and is here to give tools tips and advice um, from that perspective we also have dr shesney moodla i've pronounced that right i think i have um, and she is a psychiatrist and knows very much about mental health she's been featured on bbc three counties radio she's a good friend of um luton urban radio she's been on on my show before she's been on many shows before but is an, an expert on mental health and then finally last but not least we have the gentleman you know i had to leave it to last half we have our Krish, Krishal, Krishnal. yes he's nodding mm, kind of proud <laughs> you guys you know me uh, my pronunciations of names is never good anyway but Arv is, a, is an educational consultant and is here because we also know that we have young people who are in year 11 and um and not able to do their uh, uh their exams and things like that so this is really to put your minds at ease it's to put um your minds as parents as students at ease and also come up with what we can come up with to help ourselves. So without further ado, I am going to come to, um, I'm gonna to go to Chesney first, who is a, is a psychiatrist, who she can tell us a little bit about herself and then she would also tell us, um, you know, what she has been discovering um, with everything that's been going on. Now, what I do wanna say is, we know that we have we have been talking about uh, and we've heard so much about the coronavirus. This actually is a free zone, coronavirus free zone, because I don't know if anybody feels like me. Um, I'm, I've actually had enough in my head. I, I, I've had enough of all of the negativity that we see. And so now this is about, um, can you give me one minute, Taya, can you ring Mason, please? Sorry, guys, but my grandson is calling me <laughs> on my phone. Sorry. So we just have to um, uh, give him the, the what he needs as well. He's four years old. So we have to adapt in every aspect of our lives. You know, this is real. This is a real show. This is what happens. You know, I am a Mimi and I am 
in, at constant back and call 24 hours a day because that's what I am like with my family. And most of you will relate to that because you are also the same. And now we know that this is a time we have to make time for each other. So without further ado, um, and I just want to make sure that, oh, there we go. Yep, 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 it's working. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring Dr. Chesney in. Dr. Chesney, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Yvonne Michelle. I'm great, thank you. And it's so nice to be on your show tonight and also to be accompanied by two other um, guests. We had a chat earlier and I, you know, we all had so much in common and working with children and with adults and, you know, um, going through the same thing together because of the changes we're in. Um, it was, it's such a night, it's going to be a brilliant show. So thank you for having me on tonight. You are so, so welcome. Um, thank you for joining us. This is the new norm as we know it this we we may as well get used to this kind of thing so you know we're all going to jump in all going to have something to say there is somebody else on screen so those of you in facebook you will see that there's one there's five screens we do have lorraine yes. lorraine for lorraine um helps me to keep the she keeps me on the the straight and narrow <laughs> i can see lorraine on my other screen yes so lorraine, i was wondering <laughs> Yeah, Lorraine is here to remind me that um, I need to go to ad breaks and blah, 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 and things like that. Because, you know, when you're having a good conversation, very often we can get carried away. Yeah. So this yeah. is what it's about. So, um, so thank you for joining us. I'm going to, go into, I'm going to introduce Ruth. I'm just going to do it that way. And then I'm going to come into Arb. So, right. And then we'll, we will kick off. So good evening, Ruth. How are you? Evening. I'm very well, thank you. Thanks good. for having me on your show. That's wonderful. And um, thank you for coming on the show. I know that, um, like Dr. Chesney, you work a, a lot with young people, parents, mm -hmm. and parents as well. So you have a wealth of knowledge on how to help young people navigate um, their emotions, especially um, about right about now, and also to prepare for the future as well. So I'm really, really glad that you can be here. Thank you so much for joining our panel tonight. And um, and now I'm gonna go over to our, the only man here for the evening. Hi, <laughs> Hi Yvonne, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you, how are you? Good, good, good. Good, good, good. So Arv, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Arv. Um, I'll, I'll, for tonight, I think there's two different heads that I'm going to put on, three different heads I'm going to put on. Um, first of all, I have got a daughter that's uh, year 13, about to do her A-level. So I have that experience in terms of what she's going through uh, at a crucial time in her education. But then also as a teacher, uh, I teach maths at um, Chonny uh, High School for Girls. Um, and so we've got year seven through to 11, all with different challenges uh, and their parents um, mm -hmm. and their home support. And then also um, from a trust point of view, so Chilton Learning Trust that I uh, that I work with. Um, so what are we doing as specialist leaders in education within the trust to support homeschooling for, for the children that go to our schools, not just our trust schools, but in the, in the, in the wider region as well. So there's quite a few things and initiatives that we've already started launching, um, as well as supporting staff as well. Okay, so that's brilliant. And so that leads me quite, quite well into to my my first question is that how are you finding because I know that each one of you must be in contact with parents. And so the first concern from from my perspective, I kind of think if you get the parents on board, then it's easier to bring the children on board. So if we start to look at how we can help the parents and then help them to help their children through this period, then I think that that's going to be the most effective way of doing things. So it, my question to you guys as a panel um, is, what do you think the, the, the biggest, in your experience, what is the biggest challenge that parents are facing right now? And I know of, I'm going to um, come to, um, Chesney first and we'll just go in that order so I'll come to Chesney first and um, we can take it from from there so if I just do that okay so Chesney in your experience what what 
you know, what is the biggest issue right now for parents with their children in terms I of? Think, yeah, I think probably the, the way we're moving towards online remote learning, distance learning has, has its positive and negatives for both adults and children. Um, so I think with the adults, I think probably um, being a mom myself and a psychiatrist as well, seeing other um, adults as well, I think the difficulty lies is that this is new and for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we've all had to adjust to it. So one, it's an adjustment for everyone. Um, and whether children are more adaptable than parents to online or remote um, learning might be debatable. Two is that obviously I think for parents, I think parents would feel better supported and um, better equipped to manage the online remote learning if they feel well supported by the education institution itself. So I think that's for me the main challenge, the two challenges is adjusting um, to this whole situation of parents having now to manage their children and supervise their children at school, which they've never had to do before. And then two is actually being, feeling that they are supported 100% by the learning institutions. And I think probably the third thing is also managing the emotional well-being of their children day to day, because they've never had to do it before. And now they have to do that while still maintaining their work. So whether they're working from a home or the essential workers, whether they still need to go to, to work. So I think those would be the three main things I would say would, would be the huge challenges. Okay, okay, that's yeah. I I would. So the adjusting, you know. Yeah. Do you think how how much how long do you think the adjustment is going to take for for parents? Well, I think uh, if we so I know you said this was a corona free zone, but there's a lovely there's a lovely diagram which I can probably share with you later, which we can put up. So I think there were three zones in the learn in this um, corona phase. One yeah. was the panic and fear phase mm -hmm. zone. The second is the um, the learning phase, yeah. and then the third is a growth zone. So I think, um, like you were asking now how long is this phase? So I think if we look at those three zones, it could be that parents are in, parents and children are in either three of those zones. So they could be in the, the fear zone, some could be in the learning and some could be in the growth. So it depends on an individual basis where parents are themselves. And as you know, some parents will be better equipped to cope with the adjustment. And, and, and some institutions will be better at supporting families and the children as well and also some people would they work they'd be able to adjust quicker and they'd be able to supervise um, their children and before we came on I was explaining that prior to us going into lockdown on the 20th of March my remote learning with my kids started a week before that because being a healthcare worker and a doctor working on the front line I was very much concerned about coronavirus and I didn't want to send my kids to school because I was worried about the effects of going to school and passing on infections. So for me, my remote learning started two weeks ahead of time because we were getting the materials, finding out what was needed. Um, and then by then the school already had set up the remote learning. So as you can see, I think there's no hard and fast rule to say, you know, how long this phase is going to take. It depends individually on parents and on children. But I think Ruth and Kusha, maybe they, maybe they have a better idea because they're seeing it firsthand. Maybe they know they'll have an idea of how long it's going to take. But I think most people, I would say, are in the learning and the growth zone now. So the fear and the panic is over. Now that we are in isolation and we've been in lockdown for about, say, two to four weeks, some of us, I think people have now in the phase of learning and growth and using this time to find out what is it they need to do to make this work. And I think the more we focus on that, focus on the positives of the situation and move forward with, with the times that we are in at the moment, I think that will be great. Having said that, I know some parents are upset about, um, you know, certain exams that are not going to go ahead. Yeah. School might not go ahead in until after summer, so until September we're looking at. So whether remote learning will continue until then. So. 
Okay, so yeah. let, let me bring Ruth in because I know that Ruth also works with parents and students, but she is a mother herself and her, well, she'll explain anyway. So I'm going to bring you in. Thank you so much for explaining that. And we're going to go into the fear and learning grow um, a little bit deeper a bit later on in the show. So bear with me. So let me just put you there, Ruth. Hi, hey everyone. So yeah, my fold is as a professional, as a parent. First off, I think in the early days, like before the 20th, I was getting a lot of texts, calls from parents concerned because for primary schools, I think they shut a few days before the, the 20th. Um, their concerns were, I wasn't born here. I don't know the British education system. They felt pressure to become a teacher and provide all these learning tools. They had struggles themselves. Some people are really good at using their phones for you know, communications, but not so savvy with the laptops. Whereas children now, it's second nature. They know how to use iPads, they know how to use laptops. So a lot of the time, some of the parents are leaning on the children to be leading the directed learning, whereas they do need that support. And there was some pressure also um, for parents who have children with real challenging behaviors that was also come up as a concern and i've had a few phone calls messages texts emails from parents who really were struggling with managing the behavior of their children to the point it got to extreme measures where it was the advice given was contact children's services contact the police because Managing that in the earlier days when it was first happening was a real challenge for some parents. And so to help them relieve some of that pressure, I was like, well, what is the biggest challenge here? And it was behavior. So if we're looking at behavior, which we know is sometimes down to environments, it's about changing our approach, the energy in which we are speaking to them in. And a lot of the times the parents had their own fears so it was opening up a platform to actually start communicating. I did send out some resources to people that had requested and was given advice through my page so that parents who had any concerns, I just want to check in, how are you feeling? And then on the flip side, I have a, a son who's in year 11 and how he expressed it to me was his ending was abrupt, just like that. They had an assembly one day, they didn't even finish on the 20th, they had the assembly on the Wednesday, they were right in the shirts. The Thursday, they didn't even go in. And he was feeling like a bit annoyed, frustrated. And we've gone through sem several different um, emotions that he's been feeling on a day to day. This is why I check in with him on the day to day. We go out, we go for our hour walk together, we talk about things because with this pandemic that's happening, the way that children are filtering the information is a lot different than the adults how it is impacting on us. So whereas children are having fears that their parents are gonna die, especially if they're key workers and things like that. Because, you know, day by day, we're understanding how things work. We have to have that level of communication with the children and the young people with some understanding and kind of limit some of the information that is filtering down because it's bad news, bad news, bad news. And in their minds, that's a big, massive picture. So you see anxieties flare up, depression flare up. And some of the children that I've worked with, they're already emotionally affected anyway. And it's just been exacerbating. And then you've got a family unit in isolation having to manage it themselves. You know, thankfully, you've got pastoral supports who have been contacting parents via phone. They go through the list of children and things like that. I personally, with the schools that I work with, and any of the parents that are in contact, I'm also monitoring and asking and checking how they are so that we can give them the right pathways. I'm really glad to know that, you know, CAMH are opening up their services and doing it via, you know, other means. There are text services for counselling. There are resources out there that we will go through as the show goes on. Fantastic. Thank you for giving us that breakdown of what you've experienced over the last few weeks. Um, I mean, from my perspective, I am a parent. My daughter's at uni mm. and um, we were expecting an announcement today um, about the grading system, which didn't come. So that 
it also gives a level of anxiety as to well, what do I continue to to do the assignments do I not what what's happening and so you know I mean last Friday there was a big announcement and then after the announcement they said that there would be an announcement today which didn't happen so I know that some people who are listening on our Facebook feed will have experienced that as well and I just mm -hmm. want to give the opportunity before I bring Arvin to give his perspective um, I want to say anyone who is a parent who is an auntie a grandparent whatever it is your situation is if you are a student or have students in your home you know um, and you have any questions for the panel please do write them on the uh, Facebook feeds on both pages because I will read them out and we will see if we can get some answers from mm -hmm. our panel members also. Um, it's really important, it's imperative that we start to talk. It's imperative that we ask questions and, and, and get those answers. It really is. And we have very little forums now. There are forums, but there is a forum today um, there is a forum today and we have some experts right here who will be able to answer your questions. I want to say good evening to everybody who's just joining us. This is Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. We are talking about mental health in and around um, education, parents, um, how the families are coping with doing homeschooling and all of the things that go together with that we are talking about that today so i want to welcome everybody who is here today as i now bring in of of now you was you spoke a little bit about your daughter um being of an age as well going through exams so what is your what i mean and you're a teacher so you work in school so what has been your experience so far up until kind of like from the lockdown till now i think um pretty much what Dr. Shesty was um, going through in terms of the various stages in terms of the initial shock to the system that everybody felt in terms of having a set routine that you had for years and then that changing abruptly overnight and then having to adjust to that and, and seeing how the new system works for you at home. So the first two weeks we kind of use as teachers as a test bed in terms of if this goes on for a length of time, what things work and what things don't work, what challenges do our students and parents face at home yeah. um, when they're having to homeschool their children essentially. So there's been a lot of um, practical support that we've been giving the students. So students that um, we knew had IT issues, we identified those before we closed. So they were, they were sent home with laptops or iPads, etc. cetera. Um, right. All our vulnerable students, are called and their parents are called on a regular basis to make sure that the situation isn't giving them additional anxiety by their support structures not working in the, in the way that they're used to. Um, right. But um, so that, that's they're the challenges. Um, the, the students, I suppose, that are the most uh, in danger are the ones that are just outside that immediate vulnerable zone where in a normal working week or normal school life, they'd be okay, on the edge of being okay. Yeah. You put them in a situation where you may have two, three, four, five siblings at home, um, parents at home with their own stresses and strains, with limited IT, with broadband Wi-Fi signals being stretched, all work set online. You can, you can imagine how those anxieties day by day build up. Um, for a student that perhaps is conscientious and wants to get on with their work but is unable to do so. Uh, and they're the ones that are probably your next area of um, support that you need to give as a school is which, which homes are finding this situation difficult irrespective of whether they fit into this group or that group. Okay, so if someone was just outside of the, that bracket Mm. Um, would it, could they go to or contact the school for additional support? Yeah, so one of the things I was going to say was is that um, we're all having to learn new things at the moment. And I think the first thing that I think most of us, even as adults, realise is that there is, um, we are being overwhelmed by information coming from one source, which is your laptop. 
or your tablet or whatever it might be. Whereas we used to having communication lots of different ways. So there is a, a sense of being overwhelmed and what the um, majority of schools are doing is trying to have a real clear message in terms of what their direction is as an institution. And those schools that manage that well will release some of that emotional load from the parents because they're not getting five or six messages on a daily basis from different people saying perhaps different things. So having a clarity of message and then having clear guidance from their school in terms of how they are approaching the situation. And that may be different from school to school, what works for their cohort of students and with their demographic mix in terms of uh, the heritage of, of their parents, etc. So having a clear direction of how they're going to support their students through homeschooling in terms of resources that are available and contact details. Uh, and then the, the well-being side of it, knowing that the student is, can't be expected to be doing the same level of work at this stage as they would do if they had a teacher in a classroom with their, with their peers. Mm. And, and knowing how to manage that workload a lot more. So, us as a school have said over the Easter period, we are not setting any work for our students. We are not setting any deadlines that are going to be that are going to fall within that period, just to give the students a chance also to reflect on what's happened and spend some quality time with their family, um, which are, which we think is important because they're finding a new way of living together as well, 24/7. Absolutely. Um, so it's it's the complete package, and then most schools have various tiers of communication so you'll have the clear direction from your senior uh, leadership team in terms of this is how we're going to approach this situation at this, at this stage this is what we should be aiming for and this is the things that we should be avoiding and communicating that directly with parents uh, whether it's by um, email letter or um, social media or whether it's phone calls with whatever method needs to be done for that particular parent and then you have your pastoral needs as well, which are very much there to make sure that the uh, the well-being of their students, not from a subject specific point of view, but from a general as a student point of view, is being looked after and maintained. And then you have your subjects. So they are there to support them in terms of their subject development at home. So we've got those various tiers of support. <laughs> parents so I predominantly as a teacher will have majority of my contact with students um, the the pastoral side will have it predominantly with parents and students and the the senior leadership team will predominantly send their message directly to parents so you can see how that level of communication from the top to the bottom and all of us saying the same thing mm. relevant to our specific area from a parent's point of view they do not need to have additional confusion at this stage. That's very, very true. And I'm glad to hear that, that, that you, you guys, is that effective over all schools or is that just the schools that you are um, involved in? I mean, I know uh, the, the 11 schools that we've got within our trust, I know that we are following a similar thread amongst us. And I said, it will vary from school to school how we implement this. But in terms of the, uh, the, the big picture, that's what we're all trying to achieve. And then speaking to other colleagues across the country, they are also trying to do the same level of things. I can't comment, it's, it's not a, a generic thing that everybody will do, um, because I think each school may have, its, have different needs, um, depending on who they are and where they are. Okay. But I think a clarity of message and direction from the school are probably two most vital things that any school can do. Yeah. And those that do that well will have parents that are less stressed at this time. Okay, right. So I'm going to put this out to those parents who are listening in. I want to thank everybody for listening in. And I want to invite you to invite your friends, your family. If you have a family member who has children um, at school or school age, this is the show for you. If you are a parent and you have been feeling anxious, um, having low moods, or you know, you're just feeling a bit meh, then this is the show for you to be listening to. So, you know, do yourself a favor and share this as much as possible because we are giving out information that you may or may not be aware of. Um, now especially now as children as teach as teachers as parents are becoming teachers and now are or should be or are in full swing of of educating their children while at home and i know for sure 
um, that there are those who have parents who have become anxious because they have to teach their children. And we're talking from primary school upwards. So it's, it's not even a matter of, oh, I've got to teach it because they're, they're like in year 10, year nine going into their GCSE years and, and we're preparing them for that time and we can't afford to lose any time. But we're talking from primary infant all the way up, how to engage with young people, how to engage, keep them engaged, what materials, you know, and, you know, and, and, and Lazarus said, I think you mentioned that some of the parents that she's come into contact with, English isn't their first language. And so there's going to be that barrier as well. So it's about us coming together and kind of just really brainstorming and coming up with some solutions. And you guys may already have the solutions because we're already a way into it. But to give the parents and the students some tools to make life a little bit easier. And I think that that is really what most people are struggling with. It is the fact that things have changed and having to come to terms with it as a parent but then also managing children's behavior who have also having to deal with it and it's a new normal for everybody and so um and if you are not as educated as much and guys don't shoot me down for saying that but it has to be said you know, not everybody is educated to the same level. So where one would be like, yeah, this is easy to another parent, it's not easy. And so, and because we can't, we've got this social distance, we can't even say, well, I'll come over and help you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's about giving tools and even like suggesting things like what we're using to bring everybody together, using additional support system so that we can all be in a room together we can see what we're doing maybe that may be a help but we also have to remember learning styles not everybody learns the same way and and now we're all online it's like it's it's difficult it's a challenge to some so so we are talking um mental health we are talking education, we are talking exams and navigating, helping to navigate our young people through this particular junction of life. And I'll put it that way because it's like we're at a junction and we're looking left and we're looking right and we, are, we don't know which way to go because there is no sign in front that says this is the way out. And this is the way to, to more devastation. We just don't know. And so we have to learn to trust each other, but also we have to learn to support each other even more. So um, as I was talking about um, those parents who English is not their first language or, or parents who maybe don't feel as, um, what's the word, as, as educated or able to educate their children as much. I want to I wanna go over to Ruth and ask Ruth, has she given any strategies or tools or is, or is there anything that could make life easier for first the parent and then kind of off the back of that, um, the student? So I'm going to come over to you. Yes, um, some of it's down to confidence. Some of the parents lack confidence in their own abilities. And so first and foremost, we look at what they are able to do. There are some things people are able to do really, really well, and they can really kind of shape um, their children's learning around that. Some people are really good at cooking. So you can use English even in cooking, like what are the ingredients, getting the children to write them down, using maths, how much is needed for weighing and things like that. You know, just kind of being creative. And I always say, like, you know, learning is fun and it's fun to learn. So looking at things around the house, things in the garden, things that they're doing on their walks, you know, there's a bird. And, you know, we're looking at different key stages, you know, from the younger years to the older years. Because sometimes people struggle with basic things like spelling or pronunciating things right. These are things that we can focus on. You know, I always also look at encouraging reading for both the parents and the children and explaining how their perception 
on what they've read, to get understanding, you know, for their different logical levels so that they can increase. If you do the same thing repetitive over and over, you naturally gain confidence. And sometimes as parents, you know, we may feel that we're lagging behind. You know, when my son was young, he used to ask me things that I didn't know the answer to. And I kind of was like, used to be like, are you doing this to test me? Or, or, or what, <laughs> you know? But it's really used to, to, to just changing the dynamics, using what you can see, feel, hear around you and, and starting learning also about yourselves. Explain your learning strategies. Like I was talking to one of my good friends today and um, she used to use like cue cards and post things around her room. So I used to be saying to her, have you shared that information with your daughter? Because sometimes as parents, we have our own learning styles, our learning strategies that could help other people. Some people yeah. are visual. Some people like to listen to certain types of music, even like with the older years, and we're looking at science, periodic tables and things like that. You've got songs written all around that. You could learn this song and remember and recall information. So it is looking at a different variety of techniques to make it easier we've got the online platforms but there are people tutors teachers out there just giving information away on on tools and techniques so even david williams is now doing english you know he has his book he's putting that out there for parents for audio but he's actually now doing a youtube channel um, I think using all the resources at hand and finding the one that works well, that we feel more comfortable with, mm -hmm. is the best place to start than pressurising yourself and thinking, oh, it's all too much. You see, like with the GCSEs, they do bite size. This is how I say about learning. Do it bite size, do small chunks and get used to that and then move to the next level and the next level. Sometimes in schools, there is time pressures. We've got time term times. But where we're at now, we've got quite a lot of time on our hands. So you've got the time to actually make sure and ensure that you actually know something before moving on to the next level. But also keep it lighthearted fun. I, I would advise not to be shouting and screaming at the children and things like that. It, it just causes them to retract. But I would say encourage them if they're really struggling with something then use something else but i think there's lots of things within the home that we can use as learning tools to help the children and young people thank you for that Ruth. thank you for for broadening out um how we can help to educate our children in a simple way and i think some parents not all but you know a good majority of parents would would like some tools so, or some for instances so they you know just some suggestions so that they can go oh right i can do that or i can do this um because sometimes i know as a parent um and i can relate to exactly what you said in terms of teaching the children and, and the children getting older and they're asking you know especially maths because it's not my thing um you know asking me questions and i'd be like um hold on a minute <laughs> uh and maybe having to go on google <laughs> and asking google for the answer and the workings out just so that i could understand because some of the things that you know they learn in school i don't and i work in schools so mm. as long as it's not maths i'm good if it's arithmetic that's not so bad but when you're going into all of those other uh, stuff <laughs> stuff let me say stuff then no i'll leave it out so i understand how some parents are feeling right now some mm -hmm. parents are feeling under pressure we yeah. know that because we know what's going on some parents are losing they've lost their parents they've lost loved ones and yet still they still have to maintain this resolve and still crack on get on and be teacher be mum be everything to their, that young person in this situation. So I'm gonna come over to Dr. Chesney now in, in from that perspective, because we know, I mean, I know, I'm, I, it, today hasn't been a particularly great day. It's my, my, my son who passed away, it's his birthday today. And um, there's been a lot of, you know, lots of things going around, around, as you can see, people are losing people and lots of things going on. And so today, it hasn't been a happy day. 
you know and normally you know I'm able to I'm very inspirational and I can do I can do I can do but there are days when it's not it's not okay and so taking that into consideration of how parents are feeling and it might be a parent that a parent who's lost a parent and mm -hmm. can't go to the hospital to to be with that parent and then you've heard the parents passed away and 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 then you 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 can't even go to the all the children can't go to that funeral how can we help a parent in that situation or they might have lost their job and because they're home you know kids they want ice lollies they want this they want that and you know you want to be able to provide and maybe financially you're not in that position and so that starts to play on how you're feeling your mental health how you, you look at yourself how you think about yourself what can you suggest to somebody who finds themselves in that kind of category and we've missed i'm just going to say we've missed two commercial breaks i don't know where i don't know where um um oh she's back but we have missed two commercial breaks but we're going to keep on going my apologies for those of you who are listening on the ww dot they won't hear me now because it's an ad break right now so we're going to carry on for those who are on facebook we're going to carry on with the conversation i'm going to hand over to to dr Shnez chesney and and see of what what advice you've got for those who may be experiencing a loss or loss of job or you know family member and uh, hold on oh, hold it. there we go um yes Yvonne Michelle um I think uh, what you know the points you raise are valid and I think probably a lot of people are going through those situations which you've just um highlighted so they I mean there will be a lot of people going through grief um, and not being able to go to funerals, a lot of people who've lost their jobs, and also essential workers. I think um, Ruth mentioned, you know, essential workers coming home and the kids are worried about their parents, you know, the, the risk of losing their parents because if they have to be on the front line. So I think these are real um, issues, real problems, and obviously that's going to impact on people day to day as well as you've just said you know what the type of day you had and you know I do understand it might have been difficult for you but I think we have to understand that this is a temporary situation we are all in this together a lot of people are going through similar problems so there is help out there and I think we need to try and be more positive now more than ever and I think having a positive mindset despite these difficulties is really difficult. I think, you know, with the grief and, um, you know, having to, you know, adjust and cope with funerals and a lot of the funerals I've heard, um, and I've known people close to us where they couldn't even attend funerals. So I think that's for me is really, I think this is something, a new situation, never, never a time in this world we've had a situation where we've, we've had to deal with this. And I think, um, coping with that can be very difficult, but I think it's about us each drawing on each other's support. So whether it's support from families and friends, uh, whether it's support from the local, you know, ministry or local religious institutions, support from, um, you know, organizations. Um, and I think we do need to draw on that support. I think what's going to get us through the situation is, asking for help, having a positive mindset, you know, trying and, and actually, I think if we take every day, one step at a time, as opposed to trying and conquering every day, you know, always having plans, and looking into the future, it's good to have plans and look into the future. But I think the way things have gone over this past, if we look at, at this past month, or since the beginning of January, you know, if we if we look at how this, this illness has progressed, how the lockdown progressed, how schools closures progress. We're looking at a good three months that we've all been going. It's been like a yo-yo of emotions for everyone. So the anxiety, the panic, the fear, the frustration, the loneliness, the isolation. You know, there's a whole range of emotions that people have been going through. And I think what's important is take each day one step at a time. You know, try and cope with that day, that situation, like you, the day you've described today. You know, you had something that you needed to 
you know, remember that was really important to you. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for what you've gone through, but you know, you had to take it one day at a time. You know, yeah. you had to be in this moment, be in this day, and you had to deal with it. And I think that's how we need to look at. We we need to not think that we have to conquer every day. You know, hundred percent. You know, we're gonna have ups and down days. We all do it. We're all gonna have ups and down days. And with the way things have gone. What we've seen is we can't really make fixed plans because our lives are now in lockdown. We're in isolation. We have to cope and adjust to the situation that we are in. And that's why it's important for each of us to try and then build those emotional, you know, use the tools that we've got. So whether it's the support that we get from people, whether it's practicing mindfulness, meditation, coping with stress in the way that we know how we can cope with stress, eating healthily, taking care of our bodies, self-care is so important, as well as for children as well, you know, eating healthy, making sure they're getting enough sleep, you know, simple things like get, that, are they getting enough sleep? Are they being detect? Are they on their gadgets for a certain amount of time? Is there gonna be control over the time they're on their gadgets? Because as you know, the more and more we're spending at home, we've all been faced with it. I've got three kids at home and they, they wanna be on their gadgets, but we have to limit the time. So we have to make sure that they are getting enough sleep, they're exercising, they're eating healthily, and then they're also doing other activities and they've got a structure and routine. So I think, um, yeah, I hope probably I've answered some of your questions and also the other questions about how we actually deal and cope with this change of doing remote learning and distance learning. Mm -hmm. The other thing uh, that I think a few people have asked is about the support. I think lots of parents are feeling like they need that support yeah. and whether they can get that support because it's a new situation for them where they've never had to keep an eye on their children's progress. They've never had to, um, you know, monitor them and supervise them at, on a, at a close range, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And now they're having to do a 24 seven. So it's overwhelming for parents. They are finding it difficult to cope with. And I think if they feel that they are supported by, by the schools, by the teachers, um, and I think that's really important. But it was, it was also, um, it was surprising for me to hear from Arv, the point that he made about how teachers are also being overwhelmed. So I think it's about looking at the emotional well-being and trying to meet in a middle point. Yeah. So a middle point for children, a middle point for parents, a middle point for the teachers, mm -hmm. because we're all going, going through different range of emotions. Absolutely. I mean, you, at the end of the day, we're all human. But yes, so we're all we're human. Going, yeah, we're going to all deal with things differently. And, and there has been a lot of fear um, yes. placed on the whole nation, the, the news and the media and all of these things. So, you know, each one of us, you know, is responsible for our own mental health. We're, and we're responsible for the mental health of our children. But, you know, I look at teachers and because I do work in schools and I do know how much pressure teachers are under anyway, when you've got this additional pressure, yeah. you know, it must be really, really difficult. And as much as we've got, yes, we've got the NHS, uh, there are the frontliners, but so are teachers. And even yeah. still, we know that there are schools that are open for the vulnerable children. And so we cannot forget and this is one of the reasons why, you know, I wanted Arv to be on the show today so much because yeah. I want you to emphasize how important it is that we all remember that we are human beings first and that yeah. we are all in this together and we are all trying to navigate all these different emotions. But I, I equally know that the pressure that the te that teachers are under is immense. And yes. so I'm gonna come over to you. Can I just, just yes. before we finish, yeah, I think they, it's really important to tackle this about the teachers. And I think that is being missed, the emotional well-being of teachers because they are under a lot of pressure. They are overwhelmed. They are having to actually, you know, formulate the whole remote learning and, and deliver it day to day which is a lot, a huge pressure on them. For them, it must have been easier to have the kids face to face and to be able to communicate and to be able to manage the children's behaviors. But now they're having to do it through a screen. So I think that's really important. Just going back, 
um, Elaine um, that's watching, she had asked about the support. And I think she said that she was hoping that um, Ruth was going to shed some light on the support that uh, families can get and yes. parents can get. And she's also asked about tips on technology management. So whether the teachers can share some as well. And she just wanted to know how old my kids are. I did mention earlier, Elaine, but I've got um, three kids um, and they in year um, six, seven and eight. And uh, they are ages um, 10, 12 and 13. So I've, I'm have, they're very close together, which is good for me that I can, I have to manage them very similarly. But with regards to the technology, we have a set routine for them that they only have a certain amount of time that they can get their gadgets. So whether it's to play games or whether it's to watch movies. So we try and limit them to at least two hours a day. So an hour in the morning or an hour in the evening. Um, and that's during the time that they don't have school. Even when they have school, they're usually on for the time that they're supposed to have their, their lessons and we don't have them on the gadgets out of that. Um, and we also make sure that we are using a reward system. So when, whether they do their chores, they manage to finish their homework, and, where, you know, and then we will then decide whether they can have their gadgets or time on their gadgets. And we also try to educate them that it's not just about playing game, it's also about communicating and keeping in touch safely with their friends. Um, and for us to communicate with other people and family as well. So we're having that um, network of communication open because obviously now they can't see their friends close face to face. And I can imagine, like imagine when we were in school, we had that luxury, we played on the school grounds, we could do, engage in sports and, you know, we, we had our friends where we could chat and now it's that's all lost, that's missed, you know, we, we don't have that. So I think for kids, you know, we, we need to try and use technology in a positive way, but at the same time, we do need to manage uh, the time that they are on their on their gadgets and their devices, but I'll be eager to hear from Ruth and Ab how they manage this or what advice they have for us as parents. Thanks for that, and thanks for letting me know what's been on the feed because I've got the because oh. I can't see I can't okay. see the questions. <laughs> If the questions do come up and you want to answer, just yeah. kind of wave and then I'll know because okay. I, I can't see at the moment what's coming yeah. up. Um, yeah. I, can just, I can only see how many people are Actually, on. Actually, it's been good feedback. I mean, uh, I think um, she's, uh, she was asking about the support from uh, Ruth because she's in Hertfordshire, so about online support for parents. And I know there's a few teachers watching as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really good. It's getting people interested. And yeah. I think this talk that, you know, you're going to share your, your knowledge is key. Yeah, so thank you for that. So if you see any, even on any of your own Facebook pages, if you're, yeah. if you're doing your own Facebook and there's, a, and there's a, a question there, please do say we are at uh, 9.13. So we've got around 45 minutes left. So those of you who are listening, if you do have any questions, please do not be shy. Please be bold, be fearless. It's a piece <laughs> of you know machinery. You, no one can see you. Just type on what your question is and our, our experts <laughs> will do their best to answer your questions. They are here for you today. They are here for you today. And also just to say, if you have any sites um, where you think would be good, we can put those on, um, I would put it in the, if you can message, then I can put that in the top half of the um, Facebook page so people can just click on it instantly and instead of scrolling, 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 put it on there, but we can put that on the top um, when we put the title on and so people can just click it one time and find what they need because there's so much going on, there's so much on social media right now and things are moving so quickly. So if we can make it as easy as we can for parents and carers and whoever else, students, then I think that that is gonna be more effective for them as well. So I just wanna welcome everybody who is here on Facebook. Um, those of you who are on the www. my apologies, um, we have gone straight through um, the, the, the adverts um, but we will remember the last advert that's coming up at half past. <laughs> we will. But we are engrossed in conversation because it's an important topic. And we do need to help our parents and we do need to help our children. 
So um, who, who wants to come in uh, and just to, to, on the back of what um, Dr. Chesney said, um, Ruth or, or Arv, which one of you wants to, to yeah, Ruth will come in and then um, I'll bring you Arv, Arv after. Hi Ruth. Hi, yes, just to, I didn't quite get all of Elaine's question because I couldn't, I can't see it, but what one of the things that I'm suggesting is boundaries, creating boundaries. And, and this is geared to older children because I know the child that she's in referring to is an older child. Now, boundaries is something that is really key. It doesn't matter whether they're 13, 14, 15, 16. This is a new day for everybody. Even if it's something that they've never done before, I think it's really important to explain that no one really has any of the answers right now. So as a family unit, this is something that you have to come up with, a plan, a family plan, on how you're gonna work together to get through this together. Yes, we're all going through this together as a world, but in your own household, it's like you've got to come up with the rules. And this is where it's good to get their feedback in because I do a lot of research for public health. One of the questions that we ask the children, and Elaine knows this question quite well, is do you talk to parents about things that are important to you on a weekly basis? We ask this at the beginning and the end of a course. And a lot of the times at the beginning, we'll see the answers no. By the end of the course, we will see those answers changing because sometimes we don't really know how our young people are feeling or what they're going through. Yes, I know people like to communicate. They've been communicating on social media platforms like, way longer than we have. We, we ask them, what sites do you go on? And it's really important that we help them to stabilize their emotional feelings because they're seeing the same things that we are. So boundaries, it's there's times that we need to shut off and shut down and get adequate rest and sleep. Like some people are nocturnal, some people like to stay up late. Sometimes that late is staying up like past one, two, three, four in the morning. And then we wonder why the children are tired even when they're going into school because they're up all night. Because every time it goes ping, 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 they're looking, they're looking, they're looking. Now this, long term does have an impact on their emotional well-being so as young people it's so vital that they get enough rest so as a family create a plan this is something new it's like you're the president in your own house and you set the rules that is going to work because you've got parents that are some of them are going to work some are working from home so it's like coming up with what is going to work for all of us while we're here in this situation and really getting the feedback on what it is. Because if it's a case, oh, I don't know, it's not gonna work, not, then you're not being open. So then my thing would be, well, let's look at a different approach in how we can come up with them. So everyone writes a list. So mum writes a list, dad writes a list, child writes a list of all the things. And then we start to negotiate and compromise as to what would work in the house even getting them to do certain things. Some young people don't want to help. They don't even want to tidy up their room. They don't even want to participate. But you see, our home is like our society. You know, if we don't want to contribute in our home, then why are we looking to contribute into society? We, we've seen what's going on out there. So let's bring it home in. Let's home it in on from what we do from getting up to, to the time that we're going to bed setting out our meal time setting out our exercise plan you know having the time for the devices and negotiating at least give it a go for a period of time and revisit it and review because as things change things our expectations will change that's one of my advice talking i'm i'm one for talking because we can say a lot of things but the thing that i want always answered is how do you feel so that means you have to draw that information from inside. That has to tap in to your kinesthetics and, and give me an answer. If you're telling me that I don't know, then you're not thinking about it. But this is where I would encourage parents to kind of tap into how are you feeling so that we can get some understanding because not everyone thinks the same way. And we know that how we think, we feel is the behavior that we are dealing with. If you're having children or young people who, who are ignoring all the rules, 
and just stepping out the front door and giving no care to the members in the back household, especially as this pandemic's going on, then we really have to readdress their level of understanding, their empathy, the care that they have for themselves. Sometimes some people are feeling so bad in themselves, they don't give a toss about anybody else. So these are the ways that I'm kind of advising that we check in. And as parents, check in with yourself, but ask yourself the question, how am I feeling today? And pay attention in the way that you're responding, in the tone and how you're saying it. Because if it's, oh, I'm not feeling too good today, then you know you're not feeling too good today because your response is coming with a tone and a feeling that's making you act in a certain way. So I want us to not only think about our external language patterns and how we talk, it, it's the internal ones as well because that will give a lot of clues as to what's going on within the household. I think it is an opportunity. For some reason, I've been saying this is a blessing in disguise. And the thing is, it's weird because I've heard of people that are close to me, people have lost, people have been, you know, it's, it's not a great situation, but for some of us, right? And this is for my message to the underdogs, to the young people out there who, have felt like they've wasted five years. No, nothing's not a waste because you've got an opportunity to turn that around. And if you've got from now till September, there is nothing stopping you from getting the grades that you want to have the future that you want in your life. I just think well, sometimes we've got to reframe things as best as we can to cope on a day-to-day -day basis. So I hope that some of the information that I shared here has helped Elaine because I know it's a struggle, especially if you've got children, young people who are got EHCP plans, no EHC plans, and have behavioural issues and really struggling on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we don't want to see families break down, but we want to come up with solutions. And if you can't talk to someone, I've got some things I'm going to pop in the link because you've got Samaritans. Like the Samaritans are dealing with a lot of calls for loneliness. We've got Cooth, but Cooth is only for certain areas such as Milton Keynes, Bedford, Central Bedfordshire, um, Luton. There's certain areas that they're covering and that's a counselling session. That's for young people. So I will put some things out in the feed so that young people and parents can access because if you can't talk with the members in your home because of friction or frustration, then I would say step out of that and contact somebody else out of that so you can get the help, the support that you need. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Ruth. That was very informative. Hello, R. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm just going to leave the floor open for you to just jump in on the back of what Ruth has said and, and add what you whatever you feel that you need to add? I'm going to go back to what I said earlier, which is um, as much as the the situation now we're navigating through, we don't really have a map for this. Uh, the one thing that we can do that, again, just, uh, I mean, if it was classroom practice, we'd be looking at what uh, behaviour management and classroom management um, um, uh, strategies we're putting in place. One of the key things that I said earlier was is that a structure to your students or to your, to your child's day really helps. Now, what I mean by that is, is that, uh, for example, uh, an, an example, and again, schools have done this in different ways. We've actually given uh, a guidance map of what a child should be doing each day, how much time they should be spending on a particular um, subject to a particular activity a day. Um, as staff, we have got that information and we provide that as a minimum amount of work that we provide our students a day. Um, so from, from a point of view and what you were saying, Yvonne, earlier on, in terms of um, parents are all shapes and colours, you know, uh, in terms of education. Um, I am not expecting a parent to teach their child. I am expecting a parent to support their child and to encourage their child. Their school is still their school and their teachers are still their teachers. Okay. 
Okay. It's just that we're having to do things in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, so the first line of support should always be with the school in terms of the school should be providing some direction. They should be providing the resources and the methodology on how they're going to move their child forward. And in the first instance, the support should come from that. Brilliant. The parent should be encouraging. So the, the parent should be asking the questions like, what are you doing today? Which subjects are you doing today? What topics are you doing in those subjects? The parent hasn't got to understand it. Okay. The parent <laughs> hasn't got to be able to do it. The parent's got to be able to ask the question and be present. So from that point of view, I would say that 99% of children will tell their parents what they're doing and, and be very clear when they don't know what they're doing. Now, if a parent, after checking, the student has no record of what they should be doing, in that instance, it'd be quite right to pose that question to the school and saying, my child is at home, what, what's being provided from, we still have a duty of care as teachers and as a school to provide that work. It's just like if we had a child on absence for a prolonged period of time, we still have a duty of care to provide work that the students should be doing away from school. So this is obviously an extreme example of that um, in terms of what we, should, what, uh, what we should be doing. Now, if there isn't a structure in place, then put a structure in place. And again, you, haven't, you, you know you'll have a planner or something like that that a child will have at school. They'll know what subjects they that they that they're covering, and you can sort of like say, okay, realistically, you're going to do half an hour of that today, an hour of that today. That subject there is a core subject. You might want to do it for a longer period of time, whatever. But again, what Ruth said earlier, bite-sized chunks, small but frequent throughout the week. Um, so in terms of in terms of practical support, um, so what we're I'm quite lucky in the trust that I work in. There's over 25 specialist leaders in education that cover all the range of subjects. And what we're doing are two things at the moment, two key things we're doing at the moment, and this isn't just for our schools, is one is that we're actually building a, a website at the moment, which we're going to put all our collective resources on there for students and for parents. In terms of like the go-to sheets, how do I do this? Where should I go if I want to do X or Y? Uh, which websites do you recommend for certain subjects? What activities? How should the resources that we find useful as teachers? We're going to make them available to our parents and to our students. And when I say our parents and our students, I mean everybody out there, not just the ones that go to our schools. The other thing that we're doing is just to stay in touch with um, uh, the community. Is that on Inspire FM? Uh, we're uh, we're delivering a half an hour slot. Oh, sorry, an hour slot. A day at 12 o'clock different subject two different subjects every day where our specialist leaders are actually going on radio and delivering this information on um, to to that audience as well so they're two key things that we're doing at the moment and we're building our bank of resources to share with all the parents and again that will be free and available to everybody out there because i think this is a time where it, th there are no political boundaries there are no school boundaries a child out there that needs support is a child out there that needs support. Um, so they're, they're the key things that we're doing at, at, at schools. Now, in terms of um, the mental welfare of a child, so I've had obviously I have what I've been doing as a teacher, and I think a lot of my colleagues have been doing is I send my message. I send a message, and I've, I'm on Google Classroom, so I've got all my classes online at the moment, so we can message and I can that worked and I can send them things, they can send things back to the exec in a safe environment. And um, so I say good morning to them every day. I ask them how they are. I tell them what, what they should be looking at that day and to message me if, to say hi, so I know they're okay. Um, and then at the end of the day, I, I'll say to them, how's their day been? And I'll do the same thing that I'll do if I was in school. Now, I didn't think I was having much of an impact until the day that I didn't do the message until late. Right. And I say, you're not saying goodbye to us then, sir. And it was like, they pick up on all these, even though they don't necessarily say them out loud. So having a routine, a new routine for me is every morning I say hi to my students and every, after, every afternoon I say bye to my students. And in between, I'm answering their emails and their messages. Okay. Uh, we so, are one more, just to, sorry to cut you off. We are going to a break. Um, it's coming up, we're at 29 minutes past nine. So as I said, we would, 
we'd make the break this time. So we will be back shortly. Um, uh, we want you to stay with us. If you have any questions, I know that there's some things going up in the feed, but if you do have any questions for our ex experts, now is the time. We have half an hour left um, before uh, we come to the end of the show. And also just to remind you that we have Conversations After Dark tomorrow night at 10 till midnight. We'll be back after this. We should be on break now. Are we on break, uh, Lorraine? She's frozen. I think we should be on break. So we've got a few minutes. Guys on Facebook, thank you guys for joining the show today. We are streaming from two, from my main page and from Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Um, thank you so much for joining. If you have any questions, please message, put your questions on the feed so we can read those out to our experts and they will be able to help you a little bit more. I, I've, I've now can see, I've seen what Ruth's written, but I couldn't see any of the questions up on my phone up here. And um, I had to literally go into uh, my Facebook page on the, um, on face, I had to go on Facebook itself um couldn't see any of the questions so so um i'm glad that um you've able to put up all of those questions and thank you for highlighting those questions Chesney. that that was very helpful but otherwise i wouldn't have known so thank you so much for doing that and we are going to be coming back on to but guys I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to unmute you guys because so, we can have a bit of a little bit of a... I've got a question for Arv. And this might help someone out there listening, right? You know, like you've got children with EHC plans and they're being catered for in school. If you've got, a, this is a scenario kind of thing, but it's real. You've got a provision who only provide support for young people who have EHC plans, but they have shut. What, what happens to those young people? Because there is a duty to provide education. Mm. So what happens for them? So in terms of when you say it's shut, what-, what, what Like they closed the provision, they wrote a letter to all the parents and mm. said, yeah, that's it, you got this, pandemic we're, we're shut shop we don't have the provisions or i don't know if it's down to staffing but there's only like five children in a class anyway mm. um, I, mean, I mean just to give you an idea in terms of um so uh, us as the trust we've got we've got five secondary schools within um luton area <laughs> we've we've now gone down to one school and all our students to that one i was there last thursday and we only had five students in the secondary school. We had five students in, and we had staff in to support them. So I, I, I'm trying to understand why they would be shut um, unless there was a clinical need for that to happen. Right, guys, we're going back on air. So whatever you're saying now, just add the context into what you're saying so our viewers can listen. Welcome back. We are back on air uh yes we are i think so uh, we are back after the break we've been talking today um about education mental health um and schooling um for parents and students and i've just interrupted a really important conversation just to welcome you back so i'm going to hand right back over to Arv, who was in the middle of answering a really important question go for it Arv. Uh, yeah so ruth was just asking um about what happens when a, a child is um, has a provision, an EHC uh, plan, and their provision has closed its doors and hasn't offered any uh, alternative to that? Now, obviously, we're navigating this this whole situation for the first time like anybody else. So, oh, no, under normal circumstances, you would never have had this discussion that that provision would close with no further discussion or or options. So if it's a, a local authority based uh, controlled provision, 
then I would actually contact the local authority. If it's within a, uh, um, an academy style um, a branch, in terms of if it's part of the trust or anything like that, then I would contact them directly because they should be providing um, some provision for these students. So depending on what, who that is, obviously I don't know who that is, um, they need to direct their conversation, uh, their, their questions to those people in the, in the right areas, but they are quite within their right to ask that question and they're quite within their right to act, to expect an answer that will give them support for their child. Right. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Vasa. Ruth, do you uh, want to go back to you? Go on. No, I was saying thank you to R for answering that question because I know that that is definitely going to help some of the parents that are watching because that, that is something that's happened that I've been discussing with them. Okay, good. Good. Cool. So so what, what would be the alternative measure then if, if it's closed? What, what would they do? Where would they go? Well, currently, my understanding is that they're at home. So what I did is I sent over some of the well-being stuff so that the parents could work with them to address that first, because there are some behavioural issues there, um, looking at self-esteem, those types of things. But also, we did discuss, same like, oh, because I know that young people are supposed to have a provision of education, and it felt in my mind that this was not happening. But with them of response, I can then say to the parents, or they can hear for themselves to go direct because we don't know how long this is going to happen. And I think it's unfair to leave a young person who is vulnerable like that without adequate educational resources. Yeah, uh, and, the, and the needs are quite specialist, which is why um, yeah. the schools in general uh, have a Normally they work in small clusters, even if they're not part of the same trust. So I know of some areas where um, schools have got together, even though they're not part of the same organisation, and said, between the five of us, um, we'll open one and keep one of these schools open, because obviously from a, from a uh, health and safety point of view, that's actually works better, rather than mm. having five sites contaminated, you have one site where, where you can control it a lot more. And mm. then like, we've set up a rotor between staff, and staff from each school go in on a different day. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a senior lead in there, we have a teacher in there, and we have um, 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 support staff in there as well, as well as site, site staff in there. So from that point of view, we put that in li literally. Um, we'd had our own school open on the Monday, and mm -hmm. by Wednesday we'd had a structure put in place for the whole trust. Brilliant. So, um, so from the point of view, I can speak from what we're doing, and I can speak anecdotally what I've heard from colleagues across the country. Um, it is an inconsistent picture. I, I do get you, Ruth, on that one. But also, I think a lot of people, including these organisations themselves, haven't found themselves in the situation before. And they may not also have clear guidance on how they should be operating. You know, um, so I think as a case of like, I think all of us have said, it's a case of all of us working together wherever we are, whether it's a parent, whether it's a child, whether it's an education institution, whether it's some other branch of, of social care, that we've got to work together and think, okay, this part of it isn't working, how are we going to work together to fix it? Mm. Uh, and sometimes it's going to take more than one of those parties to fix it, working yes. together. So yes. but I think communication, so that parent raising that question um, may put other things in motion that help resolve for them and for other parents as well. So, yeah. Yeah. are there any other questions on the feed that's coming up? Do any of the parents? Because I really want to make sure that we are covering all of the questions that parents are asking, or even students. I know oh, Shesney's mm -hmm. coming. Yeah. I'll bring you in. I'll bring you in right now, Dr. Shesney. Hi, yes. So um, just on that point, I just wanted to ask, is it worth with the EHC, the, the, uh, the children's plan, is it worth getting legal advice as well? Uh, because I know when I worked um, with other, because we do learning disability and then sometimes um, if, the, if the students have like a plan, an educational plan, um, sometimes legal advice is sought to try and get uh, the provisions made. So I wonder whether that would be something that would be worth looking at. 
It may be. Um, I, I definitely think it, you can't rule it out, but yeah, because um, there's a there's a company. It's on my Facebook. Send Legal. So whoever's listening, if that might help them, it's. I think it's called Send Legal. I'll try and post the the details either to Ruth or to Yvonne, and then maybe you can sort of um, get contact. Because when we did a mental health conference, they attended, um, and they were helping uh, specifically with autistic and learning disability, but I'm sure they can help with, you know, with other individuals as well. Uh, just going back, I think the questions or comments, I think what um, um, one person had said, uh, Lorraine, she said the structure is important. So I think that's what we've all covered. I think Gar Gar has said as well. I think something Lyndon said is really important. He says like, so giving a positive reinforcement. So telling our kids well done when they've done something Absolutely. well, you know, actually praising them. I think now it's gonna boil down to parents actually, you know, like I said, I use positive reinforcement and reward system with my kids. So that's what I meant where we actually praising our kids, yeah. saying well done when they've done well, if they've not done too well, maybe help and support them. Um, but I liked that what um, Arf said, which is important and maybe parents probably felt reassured is that, um, that your teachers don't expect us to teach our kids. It's more about just supporting them. So I think probably parents are feeling overwhelmed, anxious, yeah. and panicky. They feel overwhelmed because they, they feel they have to teach their kids. But it's not that. It's just about us observing, supervising, and supporting our children. Yeah. Um, the other thing Lyndon said is also telling our kids that we love them. Yes. This is something that they need to hear more so. Well, I believe they need to hear it more so now. Yeah than ever before because I think it was Ruth that was saying how young people we think about we process information the way that we do as adults but young people process in a completely different way and and as much as we as adults we have fears and anxieties and and all of these things around what's going on but so do our children and on top of that they see yeah. and feed off of our fears yeah and so that triples there because everything becomes bigger you know when you're talking to young people it's even you they'll say uh, if something's gone wrong if somebody said something about them everybody said it about them yes and it's just one person but and we're like that as at, we are like that as adults as well but we're able to to kind of navigate our, our our the way that we think a little bit better but children it's like the whole world the whole yeah. world is and there, there's so much that's around you know when i was in school and that was I was asking school in February, they were talking about the virus, they were talking about 5G, they were talking about all of these different things mm. already, yeah. and were already having fears about it. Yeah. You know, I think in that case, then I do feel personally as a mom, and because I've got three kids in the age groups of school, I think incorporating mindfulness and meditation as part of the school curriculum is so important and in the emotional and well-being service. So I think all schools should have um, access to that, you know, and especially if there's a lot of things going around positive and negative, then they can actually cope and deal with these things. If they have the tools, the emotional tools, like mindfulness, meditation, I know for a fact, for me, how important meditation, mindfulness is. So I think the more and more we can teach children that instead of them catastrophizing or ruminating or, you know, focusing, becoming preoccupied with what's going on in the media, I think that's so key. Just to go back, um, I think Elaine uh, mentioned that she didn't get any, they didn't get any information. I think Al was talking about the guidance map, but I think um, Elaine was saying they never got that from their schools. So I wonder whether it uh, might be worth sharing some information about that um, regarding. Yeah, if, if you feel that that's something that would be a benefit, because this show is, it is about what benefits the parents. It's giving as much information and as much, inf and as much advice as we possibly can while we have these last maybe 60 minutes left of the show. So yeah, if, if you can condense it and share it, or maybe put some bits up, because what we can do is if you email the stuff over, I can put it on, yeah. to the page direct and put it in a um like an, in a folder so they can just 
click on it like a PDF and they just click on it and it will appear and they can download it themselves. I mean, like us, I am not a, a technical person at all, but over the last few days and weeks, I can say that I have learned a lot in mm. terms of technology and how yes. how to do things. So if you send that over, I can then attach it as a PDF to the link and then the parents can just go straight in, bam, and go and get it and then download it for themselves. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so what so whatever you think, you you guys are the the experts um, today. So I am taking guidance from you guys in terms of you know i'm not in school at the moment so you know i am far removed from education in that respect but my daughter is at university in her second year has assignments to do and i know the stresses and the strains from that perspective of being you know mum and trying to support her as best as i can in these times and you know it one, Can one I month. just say, um, also, I know how difficult it must be. I think what Ruth said was really important. It's like it's a blessing in disguise. And I think we really need to look at the positive of the situation. And we've been focusing on education because that was the topic of this uh, talk. But I think also we must also as parents now realize whether we single parents or there's two parents in a family, I think we need to realize that we actually need to look at the positives of the situation and also that we are able to connect more with our children and also we have the ability to spend more time with them which I think is so important because I know as parents a lot of us felt that we were living a rat race we didn't have time to spend with our kids we didn't even know what was going on in their lives but I think now we should also use this opportunity to develop good relationships with our children connect more with them you know communicate i think communication is key that's what i picked up from what ruth was saying as well you know we need to communicate more with our children and and and, and the tone in which we are communicating with them and i think this using this time is so good because it's not just about obviously about education it's about also building those relationships which is such a blessing at this moment in time i know that you know being in this isolation we've been able to to connect more as a family as much as we do obviously it does get a bit too much people do get overwhelmed with spending so much of time around each other and people are going to get it at each other's um you know at each other when when they're feeling so overwhelmed and frustrated yeah. but i think the key then is taking time out um i think i heard some advice where people said have different areas in your home where you can like one area for the child to sit down and do their studies so if it's one table where your child can sit in that room or in you know where you can supervise so have that area organized so once the holiday is over, have an area or start building an area or, or looking at your home, the different areas where you can have where the child can spend time doing their work, you know, sitting down, there's access to a computer, to Wi-Fi, there's access to help and also access to drinks and meals, you know, so meals during the break time. So having set meals and ensuring that the meals are there, I think that is helpful. Having an area where they can go during their break time, they can go then and, and spend some time just relaxing and just doing their leisure leisure time during that time. So I think having that as part of a structure and a routine is important. I'm just writing a few notes here because yeah. I do think I do think what you're saying is important. I know, I, and, and we're coming down to the last few minutes, but I do know that there was a few, and I, I'm and admittingly the children are younger, um, and there are some single parents who are finding it extremely yes. difficult, extremely yeah. difficult. Um, because and that's understandable, especially if you're a single parent and you're still working from home and then you're having maybe two or three kids or one child even. Yeah, I, I might get the whole working. It's, these, some of these parents are not working, but have additional issues. They have anxiety anyway. And so having the young children, they're finding it difficult. And sometimes it's a matter of, um, and I, I know that it kind of goes against the grain, but I know that some people have, and I'm just going to say this, some people have had to enlist friends to, 
to spend a period of time with the children yeah. so the parent can have that mental break because so have that bit of respite so i think we can still organize that so even while we're in isolation you can still organize that so whether it's online you know whether the child sits down there's someone online just talking to the child while the parent actually has some time out so the parent can have time to exercise maybe practice in meditation mindfulness or just have some wind down time i think it's about having a balance now and it's about being creative as well with our time and with how we're connecting with our children and right. really looking at the positives of the situation yeah yeah you know um, like bonding with your child watching movies together having supper together or doing online you know quizzes with other families you know just being creative on how to keep that connection and that social network so it's not just school 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 it's balance because you know we have to have a balance of social and education as well okay so we're coming up to the last 10 minutes of the show so um, the number one thing here, are th these are the things that I've written down based on what you said, um, is to, to organize and have structure, right, as a parent. Uh, number two is create boundaries for your children. So there's structure, but there's also boundaries within that structure. Um, number three I've got here, have downtime, maybe have different areas of the house where you and your children can go um, and have that time for themselves and you know they can play their games in this place but where yeah. they are doing their education that is a structured place yeah. where they do it in the same place maybe the same time for the same amount of hours per day and it doesn't have to be like the six hours that they're at school it, it can be two hours it can whatever whatever um one of the one of the good ones that one of the things that highlighted to me was that teach the number four i think that is or two four um is that i'm saying four and i've got three fingers up number four is saying that um parents do not feel that you have to teach your children you are there to support mm. and to help guide them if you have any issues then you can go to the local your local school or your child's school for more or additional support that's what i I've, I've got from you guys for number four um number five i've got here in all things be positive and be creative so i think that that goes back to what ruth said in the beginning in terms of education it doesn't necessarily have to be textbook but it has to be, look at life look at what you can learn look at what you can glean if you're in the kitchen and you're baking a cake you can bring maths into that you know um you can go yeah. outside and you can you know run up and down and have some physical education you know things like that um and so those are the five tips that I've got, I'm, I'm trying to keep the tips down to a, a number that people will remember. And so- Can I just say, just ensuring that children get sleep and managing their, their, their time on their gadgets. I think that's um, extremely important. Right, number six, get sleep. We need one more. We never end on a six, we end on a seven. I need a seventh tip. So something, get enough sleep. What uh, about the-, uh, the a reward, a reward chart, a reward system. Reward system. And praise, reward system and praise. I don't know if the R or Ruth have anything. Sorry. <laughs> I think well, they might have muted, Yvonne. And it's anyone else? Anyone they else? They might have muted. Uh, are they? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, but yeah. they can mute themselves, you know. You guys, <laughs> we didn't realize that the whole time. In education, it just goes to show you just so well behaved. My thing is emotional well being. Do your yeah. check ins with your children, have those conversations, check how they're feeling in, inside. And, yeah. and if they are kind of not too good, reach out for support. That's, yeah. that's my tip I'm going to add. That's key. Yeah, that's key. Very I, important. I, 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 so we've got nine and ten. We're not going any more than ten. We don't do more than ten tips. Gone off. Plan for the future. Plan. Yeah. That's got to be number ten. We need it's a number nine. It's got to be. It's got to be. We've got. We. This situation will end. Yeah. 
whether yeah, it's in two months, three months, six months, yeah. whenever it is, we are going to return to some kind of new normal when we come out yeah. of it. Mm, what yeah. we've got to think of is, is that where do we want to be at that point? Yeah. Right. Where do we want to be at that point when we go back um, in terms of um, as our relationships, uh, parents and children, um, parents and schools, the students in the schools, and also um, the things we want to carry into that future, the things that have helped us through this, all the strategies that we've put in place to deal yeah. with our mental well-being, deal with, deal with how we build relationships in a new way, all these different things, who we value as a society, all of these aspects, which are the important things that we carry that we want to carry forward, and let's not forget too quickly when we get back to that new normal of the things that helped us through this. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll turn, can you so, turn the mic on your phone down because it's coming. I can hear you coming back. Have you got your your phone on? No. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we need one more tip, guys. So what We've about got... goals? So with what I've said, maybe have goals, set realistic goals. So at the end of this time, what, what are we hoping to achieve? So whether it's just with our relationships, with education, with you know, with, with any one thing that a uh, goal that each of us can. So w the parent can set, the child can set and work towards. So, and, and keeping, I think keeping busy and productive as well. Okay. And take care. Anyone, yeah. anyone else got anything else to add what I can, because I can say, I can put that. In Maybe there. improving communication. Let's see. There's so many tips. We can, we can put that down here. Right, so I'm going to read these out because mm. we're down to the last four minutes of the show. They are in no particular order, all right? So the first one is to organise and be organised and create structure for yourself and your children. Number two is to create boundaries so that you both know every party in the house knows exactly what is going on, where, why are you doing it and, and how you're moving forward. Number three is to create downtime. In that downtime, your child will have a different area to, to play and to do what they want to do. That's their area. But when they are doing their work, it goes back to number one. They're in an organized place, um, a time, a day, and everything is organized so everybody knows it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. Uh, number four. So parents, you are there to, to support your child, not necessarily to teach them, but you're there to support them through the education. And if you are struggling with that, then we want you to contact your local school where your child goes to and ask them for additional support. Right. Number five is be creative. Um, and be, be creative in what you're doing um, and have a positive attitude. Number one, two, three, four, five. Number six. Have I done number? Yeah, I don't want to yeah. lose count. Number six, important, important, important. Make sure that both you as a parent and your children are getting enough sleep. Sleep is very, very important. Yeah. It helps our bodies to restore and to revive and replenish. So sleep is key. Number seven, create a reward system and give praise. Yeah, Communicate well with your children and, and have them communicate with you, which leads us into number eight, which is check in with your child. Ch find, check out how they're feeling inside how things are really, really affecting them. Make sure that you create a good relationship, that you're listening. I'm gonna add that myself because a lot of the time parents, we just do a lot of talking, but sometimes a lot of the time we need to listen. Listening is a skill on its own. Uh, number, uh, Ten. Oh, number nine, set realistic goals. And number 10, because we're one minute in, plan for the future. The future is bright. It's not necessarily orange, 
but it is bright and we can make something good out of something that wasn't so good. So always look for the positive within the negative. It's, there's blessings galore in what we're going through now. Take time with your, your, your children and your family. Guys, say quickly bye-bye because we're at one minute. We've got one minute left. I want to thank, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you everyone. It's thank been a you and wish you all the best. Yes. Leave, we're going to leave, um, we're going to leave all the information that we need on the feed. Guys, feel free to add additional information into yeah. the group um, on the Conversation with Yvonne Michelle page or on my personal page. Just put as much information that will help people as possible. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart for doing this show because I know that it will help some parents because I've been in contact with some myself and they have said their fears and we've covered a lot of what they needed okay. to yes and thanks to the listeners uh, lorraine linden um yes. elaine thanks yes. for the feedback yes. and yeah we'll put some information thank, thank you, you ruth and all thank you thank you thank, thank you all thank you so much thank you thanks so much thank you and we'll be here next week monday same time eight till ten and we'll be discussing, um, actually, we've, I think we've got Lyndon on next week, who will be doing some cooking live and direct on the show. Yeah. So, yeah, a completely different different show next week. We're going to have some, some cooking. We're going to learn about how to look after our bodies while we're in the lockdown. And so it's going to be a really, really good show. So do join us. If you want to come in and cook, you can come in into the Zoom room where you'll see Lyndon directly and be able to ask questions and ask questions Amazing. in the feed. And then we'll be, so it's a completely different show next week. And also just to remi remind you, tomorrow, tomorrow we have conversations after dark it's an x-rated show guys so no children can come to this that show we will be talking <laughs> yes, so, yes dating sites blah 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 single people how they're coping with the lockdown if they have a booty call or friends with benefit or something 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 maguan that no one needs to know about but how are they gonna cope this is what we're talking about. we're keeping it real guys we're keeping it real so join me tomorrow night between 10 and midnight for the late night show right here luton urban radio and facebook live thanks now for now thank you guys thank you so much and we are out of here. Good night. God bless. And stay, stay at your yard. Stay at home. <laughs> stay at your yard. Thank you all. Thank you, darlings. Thanks, bye -bye. So bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That and that. Right, guys. So, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me oh. just. I'm going to let myself out.